La Yena Libro estas registrita de Alexo Miller, al Alex Von Miller. Hi there, today we're going to take a look at the fifth story in the book Magia Shippo. This story is called Carpo Knabino. It's about a, a magical fish that turns into a woman and helps this poor fisherman and his daughter to get out of this debt situation. It's a short story, it's only about five pages long, but it does have some interesting vocab in it that is worth looking at ahead of time. Starting off with atensi. Atensi is the word for to attempt to murder or violate someone. And obviously if you, you know, ask an Italian person, he'll tell you that, you know, if you try to kill me, that will make a tense situation. So a tense. It was always very tense when you try to murder someone. Um, note that uh, in Esperanto, if you want to say, you know, to violate someone in a sexual way, to rape them, you could say sex per forti. That I've more commonly seen per forti uh, used in other things I've read. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen attensi used before, uh, but you'd also say sex attensi. Now, per forti sort of explains itself. Per forti, by way of force. To do something by way of force, ah, and especially if you put sex in front of it, ah, to do something sexual by way of force, well, that is rape. Uh, but sex attensi also means that. You might, though, without knowing it, go, sex attensi. Oh, oh, that's like, you know, you're dressed in a really cute outfit and you got a lot of sexual attention from someone, a lot of sex appeal. No, and attensi looks almost like attention. So just know attensi is a bad thing. Uh, that means attempting to hurt someone uh, very badly. So in this story, the bad guy has an eagle that he bred specifically to menace and attack the poor villagers that he lived by. Why? I don't know. But the eagle wasn't raping the people. He was just harassing them and pecking at them and stealing their fish and eating it. Uh, so he bred that animal. Bready is to breed. Breedy is to bridle animals. So just, we don't use breedy in this story, but just know bready and breedy, why uh, they are that, because in Esperanto, we try to only have one word for each, you know, one meaning for each word. So uh, breed and bridle are two different ones. Uh, aglo is an eagle, and we call it an aglo because if we called it an iglo, well, that wouldn't be okay because we're already using that one for igloo. So iglo is ig igloo, and aglo is eagle. Enterigi means to inter someone, to put them in the earth. And it's it's a word formed by lots of little pieces. En, meaning in, ter, meaning earth. Ig, like doing it, making it transitive, doing something to someone or something. And then e is the um, infinitive form. So it's en, ter, igi. It's not enter, igi, because entera, that is enteric. That's intestinal, related to the intestines. So just be aware that's a separate root. So this is one of those Build-A-Bear kind of words that you're putting it together. Oh, put him into the earth. Got it. And in the story, the this poor fisher, uh, his wife dies, and so he doesn't have enough money to pay the funeral costs to bury his wife, to inter her. And so he borrows money from this bad guy. And the bad guy may, charges him a bunch of interest, and he can't afford to pay it back. And so things, you know, get kind of, you know high stakes and all that and pressurey. Uh, so liquidity, he is unable to liquidate his account. He's unable to liquidate his debt and pay it off basically. So liquidity means to liquidate in a financial sense. Um, it only means that. It doesn't mean to liquefy. If you want to liquefy something, uh, you would use either liquidity if it just becomes a liquid or if you make it a liquid, then it would be liquidity. Because liquvo is a liquid, liquidity is a separate root there. It's uh, not seeing someone lick something. <laughs> it's not liquidity. It is liquidity. That's its own separate thing. So liquvo is a liquid. Constable Odo on Star Trek Deep Space Nine every 16 hours has to regenerate. He has to turn into a liquid form. So he liquvijas uh, every 16 hours. Shuldi is the word for to owe something, uh, to owe a debt. Shuldo is a debt, and a way to remember that is picture the debt on one's shoulders. Shuldi, his shoulders were full of debt. He didn't know what to do, and he couldn't pay it back. So he went a-fishing, hoping to catch enough fish to pay back the bad man uh, before the bad man said, well, pay me back or give me your beautiful daughter, and I'm going to marry her, uh, even though she doesn't want me. So that's the debt he's trying to pay off. Interezo. Uh, he couldn't pay off because of the high interest rates. Now, one thing that's worth noting here, you probably could look at interezo and guess, yeah, it's probably the word for interest. Now, intereso is the word for interest like, oh, you've piqued my interest, I'm curious. Uh, with an S, it's that. But interezo is strictly financial interest. But in English, we generally use interest as a singular word in all cases, even though there's lots of interest that is built up. 
Uh, we still say interest, not lots of interests. But in Esperanto, in this story, we say, ah, he couldn't pay because of the aldonitai interesoi, the additional interests. Even though we'd say the additional interest, or you know, kun metitai interesoi is the word for compound interest. But in Esperanto, it's compound or put together interests. So be aware that even though it's a little different than how we do it, that is common to use is to pluralize interest. Next, we have vipuro. Vipuro is the word for a viper. Now, I made another video a while back about snakes and ro uh, reptiles and things in which I said vipero is the word because in the dictionary I was looking at, it said vipero, so I went with it. Now, I did some more research just now for this and found out that uh, there was like some printing error in between dictionary editions at one point. Uh, in lingvae respondoi, I was reading that, yep, I forgot that I, you know, I put the E form in instead of the U form, but it, it said basically it's better to use the UR form instead of the ER form. And I'll explain why real quickly here. Um, anytime you can avoid using uh, a root word that ends with ER or IN or one of the word, one of the affixes that we commonly use. So ER means a piece, a particle. So ligno is wood, so lignero is a little splinter, a little particle, a little fleck of wood. So it just like eno is the feminine form of thing, regino. So if you can use a word that doesn't have one of those endings in it, uh, that's better because this word vipero could mean vipero, a snake, or it could mean a vipero. Vipo is a whip, so vipero could mean a particle of a whip, a whip particle. Now it doesn't, but that could slow you down for a second and make you go, oh wait, is this part of the root or is this a, a built up to word that is added er onto the end of it? And so try to avoid it. So vipuro is a better way of saying viper. Uh, mergi is the word for to submerge something, to submerge it, to place it in a liquid. Uh, mergi. Now it does not mean merge as in to become one with something, like the two companies merged or, you know, we, you know, the particles merged together and became one. And a way to remember this is this phrase, an iceberg will merg you. An iceberg will merg you. If the Titanic hits an iceberg, it's not like the Titanic and iceberg are now just one glob of stuff together, half Titanic, half iceberg. No, 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 no. Iceberg looks like it did beforehand, like it hasn't changed. The Titanic got all scraped up, it's filling up with water, and it is now sinking into the water. Literally, the iceberg merged it. It made it, basically pushed it down into the water while staying the same itself. And so another useful thing about that mnemonic uh, phrase is an iceberg will merg you. Don't start thinking, oh, it's to submerge. So the word is mergy. No, no, no. It's mergy with a hard G sound. So the iceberg will merg you. Uh, you are being merged if you're pushed down into the water. Plungy is the word for to plunge, to dive. If you're out of the water on the edge of the pool and you jump in, you plunged in, okay? Mergigi is the word for to become submerged. And in the story, um, at one point, someone plunges into the water. At another point, uh, the magical fish lady woman is in the water and then, oh no, danger, <gasps> and then plunges in. But we wouldn't say plunge because she's already in the water. So you'd say she kind of submerged herself. She went underwater. So mergigi is used in that case to, you know, for differential yeah, purposes. Sinky is a word for to sink. It's not used in this story, but it could have been. What they used instead is alfundigi. And I really like that they use this. This is, I just really found it picturesque, uh, this choice of wording. At the end, the bad guy gets his head cut off like you do and he ends up falling into the water and sinking to the bottom, the very bottom of the ocean. And here's how they say it, al fundigi. Fundo is bottom, al means to or toward, and igi is to become. So that igi makes it super passive. It's not like he, he came to the bottom of the ocean or he sank or swam or, you know, it's just, he just toward the bottom became. It's very passive, and the fundo is just bottom. It emphasizes that. He bottomed out at the bottom. I just really like that they didn't use something simple like le follies. You know, he fell. It, I really like that. Uh, and in Esperanto, you have the choice to build words to suit that, uh, to kind of emphasize different aspects of a verb uh, to, to suit your purposes. Now, 
let's talk about how Esperanto can sometimes be a bit vague and maybe needs, you know, we can tighten it up if we want to, to be a little more specific. Sheepy is a word which can either mean to travel by ship or to transport something by ship. Both are in the dictionary, both are acceptable. Um, there's, you can find samples of both uh, in use. So sheepy, um, you know, we would think, oh yeah, Amazon, you know, I'm gonna order something online, they're gonna ship it to my house. And you might go, oh, shipping means sending something. Um, even though if I order something on Amazon in Atlanta, they're not using a ship to send it to me, they're using the distribution, they're using a truck to send it to me, right? Uh, so shipping can, has this bigger sense. So don't get in that mistake of going, oh, shipping, oh, sheepy, he shipped it to me. No, unless you literally used a ship, you shouldn't use it. But even if you used a ship, it's better to use one of these other examples like transportis, Liver transportis means transport, liveris means uh, delivered, sendis means sent, Expedis means dispatched or forwarded. Uh, and so here's a couple examples of them being used in both cases. Li shipis tien. He took a ship to that place. Or he could say, Li shipis pomoin tien. He shipped apples to that place. In the second one, he might not have been on the boat himself at all. Whereas in the first one, uh, he traveled by boat. And so to be clear, and we want to try to be clear whenever we can in Esperanto, uh, we could say if he's getting on a boat and going somewhere, he, he shipiris, he iris per shipo, he went by ship, he shipiris. Um, that one you'll find in the, the uh, Esperanto, like New Testament, when Paul is going on his missionary journeys, uh, they usually use the verb shipiri. Uh, Velis, he sailed uh, there. Veturis, he traveled. And you could say shipe or per shipo. Um, in a ship fashion, he traveled. So that's just a way to be a little bit clearer uh, in your wording. Those are the words for carpo knabino. Enjoy. Carpo knabino. Che giazi haveno de lufeng gubernio iam vivis maljuna fishisto, honesta kai diligenta cune cuncia Dec sep yara sol filino. La knabino estis bella, saja kai lerta in fechado, char de sia infanajo, si ciam accompanis la patron sur la maro. La fichisto, shin tre amis. Ili dependis unu de la alia, kai consolis unu la alian en sia misera vivo. Ce la haveno trovigis perversa tirano, Kiu neniam sparis sia in fortoin, kiam li malbono in faris. Libredis malitsan aglon por attensigi cin contra la honestae malriculoi. La locae fishistoi forte lin malamis. Por enterigi sian mortintan edzinon, la maljuna fishisto prunte prenis della tirano sumon da mono. Cae malgrau siae svitigae penoi, li ne capablis liquidi la shuldon pro la ciam aldonitae interesoi. La tirano iam de longe avidis la filinon de la maljuna fishisto. Vidinte che la fishisto ne povis pagi la shuldon, li ecavis vipuran ideon. Iutage, ciam falis pluvego accompanata de fulmoi cae tondroi cae la vento levis altain ondoin su la maro, li venis al la maljuna fishisto cae sen indulge diris. Pagu al mi vian shuldon en tri tagoi, alie mi prenos vian filinon ciel garantiajon. La fishisto comprenis kion la tirano effective celas, sed de kie li povus trovi la monon por liquidi la shuldon in tia veteraccio. Li petegis de li indulgon, sed vane. Cun larmoi en la oculoi, li povis nur riski fishi sur la maro cune cun sia filino. La vento cae pluvo aparte furiosi sur la maro, cae gigantai ondoi, unu post alia, sin jetis contra ilia fish boato. Por ne paroli pri fishado, et ilia vivo estis minaza de dangero. Cion fari? Ciu reveni heimen, ciu resti sur la maro, ciu occase ilin attendis nur catastrofo. La patro cae la filino ne reteneble ecploris cae ploregis. Subite antau ilia boato, io ec brilis. El la maro el nagis ora carpo. En palpa bruma dauro la vento silentigis cae la ondoi quietigis. La carpo transformigis en bellan knabinon, pasis alla maljuna fishisto, cae lia filino, cae ec parolis, 
ne ploru kai jetu vien reton en la maron, mi vin helpos. Post tiui vortoi, si de nove farigis ora carpo, kai nagis en la maron, kun miro kai joio, la fisisto kai lia filino, tui jetis sian reton en la acfon. Dum la ora carpo sequis ilian boaton, kai pelis fishoin en ilian reton. En tiu tago la maljuna fisisto captis multe da fishoi, kai la samo ripetigis en la sequa tago. La maljunulo elvendis ciuin fishoin, kai liquidis grandan parton de la shuldo. Li vere joyis kai pensis, ke se li fishu ancora unu tagon, la tuta shuldo povus esti covrita, kai lia filino povus eviti la catastrofon. Sed pri la ocasajo informigis la tirano. Li flamigis, kai sendis sian malitzan aglon contra la carpo knabino. Frumatene in la triatago, la aglo rond flugis super la maro, kai vidinte la carpo knabinon, ec criis mi tui vin mortigus, se vi curagius helpi la maljunan fisciston plu. La carpo kai indignis, kai ectimis, si nenion diris, kai mergigis en la acfon. La aglo daurigis sian ron flugadon tiel longe gis gi constatis ke la carpo ne reaperos. Ciam la maljunam fisisto kai lia filino joie alvenis, ili ne trovis la carpo knabinon. Passis horo post horo, kai la suno iam comensis clinigi alla horizonto sed la carpo ancora ne elnagis. Ili forte mal tranquilligis, giuste in tiu momento. Io en la maro ec brillis cae la carpo knabino aperis antau ili. Cun malgaia mieno si sciigis al la maljuna fisisto. Pro tio che mi vin helpis, la tirano al sendis sian malitzan aglon por min mortigi. Audinte tion, la fisisto chagrenigis, nesciante cion fare. La carpo knabino lin consolis, Nun helpas nec mal joio nec chagreno, ni ne perdu tempon cae fisciu ciam la aglo forestas. Post la diro, si nagis en la maron. La fisciisto cae lia filino rapide jetis sian reton en la acfon, cae la ora carpo pelis fisciuin en la reton, tiel ce baldau captigis plen retoi da fisciui. Subite, el post rifo, el flugis la nigra malitza aglo. Gi facte ne forlasis la locon, sed sin cascis post la rifo. Nun, ciam la carpo knabino de nove el nagis el la maro, gi plongis mal supran, cae sin mortigis per sia pinta peco. Quancam la maljuna fisisto liquidis sian shuldon cae per tio savis la filinon, sed la memoro pri la carpo knabino, ciu offeris sian vivon por lin helpi, ciam lin mal joigis. Lido proparis iom da offerajoi, cae cune cun sia filino, scipis tien, cie la carpo knabio estis mortigita. Extera tende, ili vidis tie rocon el la maro. Ie attenta regardo, ili trovis che la brillanta roco figure tre similas la oran carpon. Cun grande miro, en la coro, ili do faris offeradon cel roco. Post tio, Ili ciu tage venis tien por fisciado, cae ciam revenis hemen cun abundo da fisciui, tiel ce ilia vivo iom post iom bonigis. Post ne longe la tirano informigis pri tio. Forta envio inspiris a li la desiron rompi la rocon. Iu tage cun portante cun si grandan martellon, li veturis al roco per boato. Anca la malitza aglo ron flugis en la aero por lin curagigi. Ciam la boato atingis la carpo forman rocon, la tirano levis la martellon cae tut forte gin batis. Cun surdiga tondro sen nombrai stonai squamoi en grandezzo de man plato, disflugis cae quasa sen nombrai hakiloi sin jetis al la capo de la tirano. La malitza aglo al flugis por lin savi, sed la stonai squamoi sage gin trafis. La tirano mortis cun la capo dishakita, cae al fundigis cune cun la aglo. La carpo forma roco ec nun ancora staras en la verda maro.